She wants to know about adoption. She says that she's heard that if she adopts uh, a girl, for example, this girl when she grows up will have to cover in front of her husband and so forth. If she then adopts a boy, when the boy reaches the age of puberty, she will have to wear hijab in front of him. Uh, what's the ruling on adoption and what are the things that she needs to be aware of, Sheikh? Allah the Almighty said in Surah Al-Ahzab, Udu'uhum li mm-hmm. This is rule number one concerning adopting an orphan or a child. If you know the father of this child, it should be a boy or a girl, then you must give him the last name of his real father, mm-hmm. biological father. And it's not allowed to give him your name at all. This is totally prohibited. This is an indication to the very following important ruling, which is that they are not your real sons. They are not your real sons. Meaning, yes, you have been so generous to them, feeding them, giving them the education, providing them, giving them housing, raising them along with your kids like your own kids. May Allah bless you for that. The Prophet ﷺ said, for such deed, whoever will do that will be with me in paradise like these two fingers. And he pointed with the middle and the index finger. I mean, that close to the Prophet ﷺ in paradise. But that doesn't give you the right to claim this adopted child as your son or daughter. That also means if they are not your real sons or daughters, once he or she reach the puberty age, they are like strangers. In what sense? Not strangers that you treat them as strangers, but strangers, they are not relatives. There is no kinship between you and them. So if it is a girl and she is not your nephew, Maybe you can adopt uh, your niece, I'm sorry. You can adopt your niece, her father passed away or they're poor and you raise her in your house. So she is to you a mahram and you are a mahram to her. You cannot permanently get married under any circumstances. But if she is not related to you at all, this girl whom one day you adopted even since she was one year old, a few months old, if your wife did not breastfeed her, so there is no relationship whatsoever, whether kin relationship Mm -hmm. or due to suckling. So when this girl reaches the puberty age, you should treat her like any other girl who's not your relative. Okay, I've got to stop you here because many people may be watching and saying, oh, Sheikh Muhammad, you're very harsh. Islam is very harsh. This girl you brought up from the age of, say, two or three now, she's 11, 12, and she's a stranger. What what is Islam? That's why I said, do not take things out of context. You have to hear the whole story. May Allah bless you for your generosity. And I said that you deserve this reward, the mm-hmm. magnificent reward of being with the Prophet ﷺ in heaven like that, uh, very close to him like the index finger and the middle one. Okay. Yet, once the girl reaches the puberty age, there is a huge question. This is a hypothetical question. Is it permissible for the father, for this nice gentleman, who raised this girl after she reached the puberty age, is it permissible for her to marry her? Is it permissible? Not once again, underline this question. I'm not saying that, go ahead and marry her. I'm saying, is it permissible? Yes, it is permissible. That means she is not your mahram, nor Mm -hmm. are you a mahram for her. So that's why she must keep the hijab on before you. Similarly, on the other flip, if it is a boy, and you raised him since he was a few months old, and now he reached the puberty age, your wife has to keep the hijab on before him because he is not a mahram for her, nor is he a relative such as a nephew, uh, nor did she breastfeed him. So there is no relationship whatsoever other than being taking care of them and being generous to them, adopting them in a sense of giving them education and raising them. So that does not legalize the relationship, nor does it make him or her your real son. They are not your real son or daughter. So that is the indication and the importance and the significance of having to keep the real names, not giving them anybody else's uh, last name. So if your adopted child reaches the puberty age, now you have to treat them. You cannot be in privacy with them in one place because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said مَجْتَمَعَ رَجُلٌ وَمْرَأَةٌ إِلَّا كَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ وَثَالِثُهُمَا Do we understand that? If any male and a female who are not related, who are not mahram to one another, 
who are not a couple happen to be in one place behind closed doors together, then the third is Satan. What does it mean? It means it is haram. Do not tell me nothing wrong will happen. I trust myself and I trust her. I raise her. Do not talk to me about any of that. Even, by the way, if you happen to have this meeting with your secretary, with your nurse, mm. with the, your teacher, private tutor, and you've been doing this for a year, nothing wrong happens. No illicit relationship whatsoever. You're still committing a sin. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تقربوا الزنا. He did not say, do not commit adultery. Rather, he said, do not go near it. And he, for that reason, forbade just me looking at the aura of a woman who is not lawful for you. قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبُصَارِهِمْ And similarly, he commanded the believing woman, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغُضُّنَ مِنْ أَبُصَارِهِمْ To lower their gaze, because that leads to the following, guarding their chastity. Jazakallah khair for the explanation.